Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be going over how to create this very basic but quite effective vampire coffin jump scare. So, it doesn't have to be a vampire in a coffin, it can be absolutely anything you want, really, but I'm going to be going over how to create this basic jump scare today. So, let me hit play and I'll show you what we're going to make today. So, you see over here we have a a vampire in a coffin, if we were to walk up to it, we're going to get a sound effect, it's going to sit up inside the coffin in a kind of jump scare fashion, and then go back down afterwards like so. And this is only a one-time event as well, you can make it so it re-triggers as well, but I feel like it's just going to work a bit better this way, and it's very easy to customise and change to get it how you want. So this is what we're going to be setting up and creating today, so without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to import all of our animations, models and sound effects that we want to use for this video. So I'm going to leave a link in the description down below to the sound effects I've used and for the model I've used as well for the coffin. Now the actual character is on Mixmo, so if you just search for vampire on Mixmo you will find it. And the animations, I've got a lying down animation from Mixmo as well. Now I have modified it slightly and I do have a video linked in the description down below as well to how you can also modify it to what I've got. It's not using this example, but you should be able to copy it and get it. So if I had to open Vampire Animations, you'll see that I have a lying down idle, like so, and then a lying sitting idle like this. So you just want to basically change the animation to be sitting up, which again, that video goes over perfectly. And the coffin as well, I have also made some slight changes to, for example, what I've done is I've separated the coffin and the lid, so we have two different things like so, just so I can take it off. And I've also had to do a little bit of editing to make sure that the inside is also going to be looking good so it's not see-through when importing into Unreal. Now unfortunately I can't share that mesh with you just because I didn't create the original one. You will have to download it and make those changes for yourself or make your own one from scratch or obviously find a different one which will work a lot better for you which you can download and use straight away. So now that we've got all of that out of the way, that's just the basic stuff which you can import. Again, all linked in the description down below and any changes you might need to make are also there as well. But now that we've got all of that imported, we're going to start setting up our animations. So I'm going to go to my vampire animations here. So again, you should already have these animations in or whichever ones you want to use. And we're going to select both of them, right click, and we're going to create an montage because we want both of these to be animation montages. And we're going to open them up straight away like so. All we want to do in here is untick enable auto blend out save, close, and do that for both of them as well, save and close. And the reason we're doing that is because when this is ticked, as soon as the montage ends, it's going to finish and blend out of the montage. I want it to stay in this pose like so, which is why I've done that. So I'm going to close that. Now we need to set up a very, very basic animation blueprint. All we're going to do in here is just put in an animation, but we need the animation blueprint in order to use an animation montage. So we're going to right click, go to animation, create an animation blueprint, which is the skeleton you have for your enemy, or whatever it is, which for me is the vampire skeleton. Press OK and name it what you want. So I'm going to name it Vampire Anim VP. Opening that up straight away. Again, this is going to be very basic, so all I'm going to do is get the lying sitting idle animation I have. Out of this, get a slot, default slot, to enable the use of animation montages, with that going into the result there. And that again is all we need to do, compile and save that. So again, the only reason we've done this is just to allow for the use of animation montages. However, one thing, I don't mean the lying sitting idle, I want the lying down idle. So the original position that the vampire is going to be in, lying inside of the coffin, which should be this one here. And we're going to close this. Now we're going to set up our sound effect. So again, we're setting up all the different components first before putting it all together in the end. So I'm going to go to content, my sound effect folder, and again, I have these two different sound effects here, one for the jump scare, and one for the scream. Again, use whichever sound effects you want. If you use these ones, however, you do have to credit them in the credits of your game, which isn't too much of a big deal, but make sure you do do that. I'm going to right click, go to sounds, and create a sound cue, naming this jump scare cue, opening that up straight away. Then what I'm going to do is just minimize it slightly so I can still see it like this. Then select both of my sound effects and drag and drop them into my sound cue like this. Then I'm going to drag out of one of them, get a mixer, connecting them both into the mixer with that going into the output of the sound. And the reason I've done that is just so they now both play at the same time. So if I were to press play, you'll see that they're both playing at the exact same time, which is how I want this to work. What I'm also going to do is tick override attenuation so this is going to be working location based as well. 
You can change all the inner radius and fall off distance if you want, but the player's going to be so close to it that that won't matter at all. So you can change it, but you don't have to. Save and close that as well. Now we're going to actually start setting up the actual coffin blueprint in which the jump scare is going to take place in. So I'm going to go to content, my coffin folder, right click, add a blueprint class, I'm going to make this one an actor, and I'm going to name this coffin BP, opening it up straight away like so. What I'm going to do is again minimize it like this, select both of my coffin static meshes, or again whatever it is for you because you might be using a different one which has different meshes, and then I'm going to add component, static mesh, multiple assets to add them both in here like so. Then I'm going to move the coffin lid off, I'll move it properly in a minute, I'm just going to place it here like so, just so I can access the inside of the coffin. Then I'm going to add a component, adding a skeletal mesh, and this is so we can now add in our vampire. So the skeletal mesh is going to be our vampire mesh like this. Animation is going to be animation blueprint with the anim class of vampire BP. Now you'll see this vampire is quite large, so this is going to be a bit too big for the coffin. So all we can do, select the coffin and just increase the scale of it to make sure that it does fit the vampire perfectly for how we want. So I think something like that is going to be a good size and a good fit for the vampire like so. Again, customize this to get it perfect for you and how you want. But for me, this is going to look okay. I'm going to compile and save that. Then I'm also just going to move the lid to be in a proper position, which I want. So what I might do is again, just minimize it slightly like so, so I can see it placed in the level to get a better view. So I'm going to do that, place the coffin in the level, get into position and then move this how I want. I'm also going to toggle off the snapping of the grid for both moving and rotating so I can get more precise movements. I'm also going to press this button here to make sure that it's going to work perfectly. Now again, move it to where you want. So all of this really comes down to customizing for how you want it to look to make sure this is perfect and unique for you and your game. So I think something like that is going to be fine for me. I'm not going to get into too much detail for it because again, this is just for the purpose of the tutorial. But this is now the basic part of it set up. We have the vampire inside of the coffin. And the final step in here is we want to add in a box collision. So we're going to add a component, add box collision, and basically what this means is when the player is inside of this box, the jump scare is going to trigger and fire off. So place this where you want and how big you want it. So I'm just going to make it a general box around the coffin, maybe something like this. So the player has to be predominantly on this side for it to work, but they can be over here as well. So again, if the player is inside of this box, the jump scare is going to fire off. So make sure you keep that in mind for when you are placing this down. We'll compile, save, and go over to the event graph like so. Now the last part of the code is actually firing off the jump scare. So I'm going to delete all of these nodes, right click, and add a custom event, naming this jump scare or vampire wake up, whatever makes the most sense for you. Out of this, we're simply going to play a sound at location with the sound being our jump scare cue, which we created earlier, and the location being get actor location. So it's going to be where the coffin and the vampire is. Out of this, we're going to play anim montage or just play montage sorry with the in skeletal mesh component being our skeletal mesh which we have in the blueprint and the montage to play is going to be our laying sitting idle montage so it's going to sit up when we start this jump scare and again it's going to stay sitting for as long as we want so i'm going to hold down d left click get delay coming out of the normal execution and this here is going to be how long you want it to be sitting up for so i want it to sit up for five seconds and then go back down. Customize this to get it perfect for you. And obviously you can do this all in one animation as well, so you can have just one animation for sitting up and going back down. However, I'm doing this the free route and I couldn't really find any good animations for free, so we've just made our own. After this, we're going to again get the skeletal mesh, play montage after the delay like this, and now this new montage is going to be a lying down idle. So we sat up and now we're sitting back down compile, save that. That is all I'm going to do for the jump scare. So it's a sound effect, sitting up and sitting back down. Again, you can change this to be whatever you want, but this is the basic version that I'm going with. And then to trigger it, all we're going to do is again when we enter the box collision. So we're going to right click on the box, add event, and our component begin overlap. Out of other actor is going to be a cast to our character, which for me is the cast to a third person character. For you, this can be third, first, whatever you've named it. And the reason we're doing this is so that it has to be the player which has overlapped the box collision for this to fire off. 
so if another AI wanders into it, it's not going to fire off, it will only work for the player. And again, as I mentioned at the start, I only want this to happen once, so I'm going to hold down O and left click to get a do once, like this. You don't have to have a do once there if you want this to be able to fire it off more than once, but I think once is going to be good for me. And completed is going to be call function jumpscare. We'll compile, save, and this is now the code all done, working perfectly for us. So if we were to close it, we can hit play and test this out. So you'll see that the coffin is over there. If we were to walk into it, what you should see is we will get the sound effect. It is now sitting up and sitting back down again. So this is now working perfectly for us. So I think that will be it for this video. So we've done everything we want to do. I've just turned down the volume a little bit. But as you can see, we've got this jump scare in which when we walk close to it, a sound effect will play off. The vampire will sit up in the coffin and then it will light back down again. So I imagine this will probably look a lot better in first person. But again, this is what we've created, very easy to adapt upon and change to get it unique and working better for you, so it doesn't have to look exactly like this, obviously. But thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.